Hey guys and welcome to this guide. As all us disc players know, when left to free cast, healing is great fun, being able to heal with damage and play super aggressive. Due to the recent nerfs to focused will and changes to the meta, disc priests are finding they are becoming the target more and more often. In this guide we're going to be giving you the tips and tricks high rated discipline priests use to help to stay alive whilst being trained in 3v3. The most important thing with Discipline Priest is selecting the correct talents in regards to what comp you are playing and what you are facing. To do this, you must recognise who the enemy's kill target is going to be. If you are going to be the kill target, you need to adapt your talents, prioritising staying alive over damage and playing full defensive. When being trained, your talents should look like this. Now you might be thinking, why not play the popular Castigation Contrition build? This is because when you are being trained, teams often prioritise kicking you on holy, which is your penance. With both of these talents directly buffing penance, getting interrupted on it means you are basically playing without two talent slots, and the only time you can guarantee to get a penance cast off when being trained is when the enemy has no interrupts or you can get away, at which point you'll be fine simply with shadow men's anyway. Twist of Fate enables you to have an easier time to top yourself, as well as increasing your passive healing and Sins of the Many will greatly buff your passive atonement healing, coming from Purge the Wicked and Mindbender. Two instant casts which you can ensure will both assist you in staying alive when being trained. As for Angelic Feather versus Masochism, consider what composition you are playing. If you are playing with a Hunter or a Rep who can give you either Blessing of Freedom or Master's Call, then you can combine this with your Feathers to help you kite. However, if you are unable to get away, Masochism is more than likely the better option. In regards to PvP talents, Dome of Light is a super underrated cooldown and is always recommended to take when you're going to be trained. It adds an extra 45% damage reduction to those of whom are inside your barrier, on top of reducing the cooldown by one minute. This is fantastic at countering strong offensive cooldowns used by your opponents. Ultimate Radiance is also mandatory when being trained. Is your only instant heal and deals a decent amount of healing, with the only drawback being the mana cost and reduced atonement uptime, which we are not worried about when simply looking to survive. The last talent option is up for debate, however when playing full defensive I recommend to take Trinity, as this will help to also boost your passive atonement healing, both from the talent directly and the fact that your radiance will not apply atonement, meaning you will deal more damage thanks to sins of the many. Or finally, Strength of Soul, as when spamming shields in certain situations with this talent is great at helping to survive. Dark Archangel can also be considered if you think you can survive with just Radiance and Barrier, and your team needs that extra bit of damage to help end the game. For Azurite traits, it's best to take those that will buff your healing. Traits like Tidal Surge and Battlefield Focus or Precision do nothing to help you survive, so are not recommended. Traits like Enduring Luminescence and Death Throws are great when being trained as they buff your instant healing and help you to survive. Whilst being trained as a Disc Priest, you have two things to think about. Number one is what cooldowns you should use and in what situation you should use them, and most importantly is number two, your positioning. When you are the target as a healer, your positioning may not be the first thing you think about. However, it's one of the most important things you should consider whilst being trained. You need to always remember you dictate where the enemy melee is going to be. This means you want to focus to force them into a bad position. To best demonstrate this, we're going to watch a few clips where Rattapai, one of the best disc priests in the world, is up against one of the best turbos in the world from XRB to the moon, where he uses his positioning to help him survive and create pressure for his team. Take a look here, the enemy turbo have decided they are going to train Rattapai. Take a look at his positioning. He is in line of both his mage and the enemy resto droid. This is good for his mage, but bad as the enemy resto droid can freely cast heals onto the warrior and the enhance. What he should do here is move around the pillar out of line of sight of the druid, and for his mage to come here to his side so he can still cast onto the DPS. This will cause the enemy team to either not chase due to the risk of dying behind the pillar and getting stunned, or have their druid have to reposition across the whole map, as being close to the mage or rogue opens him up to being crowd controlled easier, and the time spent moving will make him fall behind on healing. Rattapai moves around the pillar, forcing the enemy shaman to follow. Getting stunned behind the pillar 
and forcing him to have to use his trinket to survive. How does this help Rattapai survive, you might be thinking? Well now, if presented with the same situation, the enemy shaman is going to think twice before following Rattapai around the pillar. He's going to have to wait for his healer to either reposition, or simply not follow and have to switch targets, giving Rattapai time to recover. By constantly adjusting his position in retrospect to the enemy healer, Rattapai is going to force the enemy to overcommit, either relieving pressure for him to recover when they have to retreat, or causing the enemy to misposition and die because of it. It's also worth mentioning that popular Dispriest compositions including RMP, PHP and Jungle all have one thing in common, they all have either great pills, strong slows or freedom. This allows you as a Dis Priest to abuse either the slows or freedoms to constantly reposition and escape your opponent, allowing time to recover. Next let's cover the defensive options available. Dis Priest has Barrier, Pain Suppression, Rapture and your Gladiator's Medallion that you should be rotating. Using your cooldowns correctly whilst being trained is very important, so we'll do a quick test on what you should use and why. First thing to do when you get into a game is to delay the time it takes for the enemy team to connect to you, with your team hopefully helping to slow or crowd control them on their way to you, also delaying the time it takes for them to connect. Once they inevitably connect is when you need to start making decisions based on the situation on what cooldown to use to survive. Here the enemy rep paladin opens with a stun on Hydra. Instantly notice his position and the warrior's position. What one of your defensives do you think you should use here? Take into account the enemy's position. If you said none, you would have been correct. The enemy team is yet to connect and the Hammer of Justice is going to be almost over by the time they connect to Hydra meaning he will almost certainly survive this stun and be able to use something once he comes out. Once he gets out of the stun, he finds himself low, as the Rep Paladin has used his Avenging Wrath and the Warrior has now connected. Now Hydra has a choice. What cooldown do you think would be best to use here? Knowing that they have committed their strong offensive cooldown, Avenging Wrath. Rapture could be an option, but considering the damage the enemy team would be putting out and the fact they have a shaman, they could quite easily purge the shields and kill him through. Pain suppression is also a valid choice here, but can be used whilst in a stun, so now is not the best time to use this as the stun is already over. This leaves Dome of Light. This is an amazing answer to strong offensive cooldowns used by your opponents. Hydra uses his barrier in conjunction with Dome of Light and uses the time inside to get some healing out and deal with the enemy's interrupts whilst inside the barrier, as there is no chance he is going to die. Now he has recovered their first stun and initial cooldowns, Hydra works on delaying the time it takes until their next stun, making sure to reposition around the box, using his teammate's slows to attempt to kite. Once they connect in the second Hammer of Justice, we have again a choice of what cooldown to use. This time because both the Rat and the Warrior connect and the Shaman is ready to purge again and all interrupts are up, Hydra opts to use Pain Suppression as this will enable him to not fall behind here. What Hydra does next is why it is important to take Shine in Force against Melee Cleaves. He positions himself around the corner of the box and knocks on himself and then instantly walks around the corner giving him time to top himself yet again. Gladiator's Medallion should be used in a situation where you know you can trink it and not have to use any other cooldowns in conjunction with it. This could be situations where enemy's pummels are down or you simply have two charges of radiance and know you will be able to heal through the damage, as combining your trinket with other defensive cooldowns is a huge waste most of the time. Lastly is Rapture. This should be used in scenarios where you are not stunned and the enemy team is using offensive cooldowns. If the enemy is unable to purge, Rapture will keep you a stable amount of health, allowing you to bait kicks on Shadow Mend whilst the shield is still active. Although, make sure not to get kicked on Penance during Rapture, as you won't be able to shield wasting the cooldown entirely. Whilst being trained, damage takes a back foot. You want to always prioritise keeping yourself topped off and at a stable amount of health. Your main heals whilst being trained are Power Word Shield, Penance, Purge the Wicked, Power Word Radiance and Shadow Mend. You should look to maintain Purge the Wicked on as many targets as possible. Think of this as a rejuvenation from a Resto Druid. The more you have out, the more passive healing you're going to be doing onto yourself via Atonement. Shadow Mend, when paired with Masochism, 
should look to be used before the enemy connects. Try to keep up that 10% damage reduction wherever possible. Also do a lot of dual schooling with this ability, as if you are kicked on Shadow Mend, you can use Penance, Radiance and Shield, so it's often worth baiting kicks onto Shadow Mend, so you can use your other abilities. Also, Shadow Mend is a great way to quickly top yourself when you can freely cast. Power Word Shield outside of Rapture is usually just your main way of applying atonement, however when getting trained it's often overlooked as a heal. It's still a 10k plus instant absorb and should be used when moving, when you don't have penance or are at risk of being interrupted on it, and don't think you need to use your radiance charges. Penance should simply be looked to use off cooldown, ideally when you're at lower risk of getting kicked on it, as getting kicked on holy locks you out of all other abilities, bar shadow mend and purge the wicked. Look to use the fact you can penance while moving to easily reposition. Last up is Radiance. This is your Hail Mary heal. Use the charges of this wisely as they are your main way to top yourself free of interrupts and purges. Use these very sparingly and when you have to. It's also a good idea to wait until you gain your big twist of fate buff for a bigger Radiance. Mindbender should also just be used relatively off cooldown, just for the added healing and mana regeneration. Looking to hold it if your team is soon doing a setup. Desperate Prayer is again used as a tool to simply gain a little extra health, to either get you out of execute range or to stop yourself from dying. Ok guys, just to recap the most important aspects to survive when being trained. Number 1. Abuse the fact you dictate where the enemy positions, constantly looking to line the enemy healer. Number 2. Rotate your defensive cooldowns correctly. Number 3. Focus on surviving and don't worry about pushing for crowd control. Number 4. Keep up your purge the wickeds, as atonement healing provided will add up and help you keep alive. Number 5. Rely on your teammates for slows and pills to help you either get away or stay alive. Hope you enjoyed this video on how to survive when being trained in 3v3. Thanks for watching and be sure to leave a comment and like if you like.